imagine this. You just graduated with your master's in counseling and you're hired at a mental health agency. You learned about Freud and all the theorists. You have some experience, but not much. You're a novice, but you're excited, you care about people, and you want to change the world. You're ready to see your first client. A man walks in and breaks down, telling you his wife left him and he relapsed after 15 years of sobriety. You empathize, and he says you're the only one who understands him, and he doesn't know what he would do without you. You feel so good about your counseling skills, you give him your personal phone number and tell him not to hesitate if he needs any help. But this results in him calling you constantly, looking for reassurance, and getting angry when you're not available. So you wanted to help, and it seemed like you did, but really you didn't. Now imagine you're 20 years older, a seasoned counselor. The same client comes in to see you, but this time, within the first half of the session, you pick up on his lifestyle pattern. He depends on others and doesn't feel capable unless someone else is taking care of him. So you tailor his treatment in light of this ingrained pattern, and you don't give him your personal phone number. Guess what? He gets better, and you actually help this time. So what's the difference here? It is one between novice and expert. The novice counselor scrambles to use formulas and theories to approach a client, but may not pick up on patterns and other relevant data. The expert counselor has internalized all of this information and no longer seems to think about a problem, but just seems to know what to do. Indeed, she has expertise. That is where my research on case conceptualization and reflective practice comes in. I'm studying not only the formulas that counselors in training need to learn to build their foundation of knowledge, but also the mechanisms through which that knowledge becomes expertise. Case conceptualization helps counselors identify the unique patterns and operative dynamics that each client brings to therapy. It is the basis for understanding. Reflective practice is a method of analyzing what we learn and modifying our understanding of our own thought processes. We do not learn from experiences themselves, but from our reflection on those experiences after the fact. Teaching counselors innovative methods and engaging them in reflective practice can help shorten the path between novice and expert. So now, even the novice counselor can quickly build expertise. So what does all this mean in the grand scheme of things? It means improved mental health care, lower costs, and an increase in quality and outcomes. So that eager young student in all of us really can change the world.